You think you might be ready for what I'm about to show you, but let me assure you, you're not. You think the Sonic movie is the first time Hollywood has ever attempted to make a movie about a hedgehog? How wrong you are. I am so happy to be the one that gets to introduce you to the film, nay, the cinematic masterpiece that is Andy the Talking Hedgehog, starring Tara Reid and Dean Cain. The director, Joel Reisig, who's also the voice of Andy the Talking Hedgehog, can you stop it? Commented on the movie trailer on YouTube saying that the movie is really intended for kids between the ages of four to seven, and therefore accounts for the low quality and production value. And to that I say, I don't believe you. You know how I know that's not true? Is because they've advertised it heavily on its starring Tara Reid and Dean Cain. They even used this picture of Tara Reid on the box art, which was taken during her American Pie days. I want to share in this journey of Andy the Talking Hedgehog with you. There will never be a better hedgehog movie. I don't care what the Sonic redesign looks like, okay? Fight me. Hi, how you doing? I'm Andy. Oh, okay, so we're going to be doing this whole door the Explorer interacting with the viewer type of thing. Okay, gotcha. And I know what you're thinking. How can you understand me? Call it magic? Call it whimsy? Call it lazy writing? The movie has about an hour and 15 minute total runtime, and most of it is just filled with insert shots of this hedgehog, and the other half is filled with unnecessary freeze frames. Meet little Lily Mason. She's my best friend. But to be honest, when it comes to making a cheap and efficient movie, freeze framing 20% of that movie does uh, make it cost a little less money. How's your coffee, hun? That's Melly. Great, thanks, dear. Oh, this guy here is Bob. Dean Kane. Why are you in this? <laughs> oh, God. I don't know what's scarier, the cat or this weird sound effect they throw in that you could hear actually cuts out a little prematurely. Hey, kid, the bushes, step in. Stranger danger. This kid actually seems pretty smart throughout the whole movie, but you've got to admit, it's weird to have an adult lure a kid saying, hey kid, come follow me over to the bushes. Be careful what you wish for. It's a famous saying, like, you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. This is so cringy to watch. I'm really trying to get through it. The amount of disinterest that Tara Reid has in this part is so palpable. I can taste it. I'm someone who can grant a wish for you. You can? So the kid makes this wish that all animals and even plants are able to speak. All things growing, chirping, or squeaking. Get ready to do some serious people speaking! And that was it. With those magical words, I was able to speak. And just like that, I didn't know if I would be able to finish this movie. But then I thought, if I could get through Birdemic, I could get through anything. Your lips aren't moving. Well, why should they? A lot of people's lips move, but they don't really say much. No, no, no. Don't try to Wizard of Oz your way out of this. But some people without brains do an awful lot of talking, don't they? Realistically, it's because this movie has a non-existent budget, so animating an animal's mouth, even poorly animating an animal's mouth, Still takes a lot of time and still costs money. Thank you, Fair BFF. Don't look at the camera crew. Thank you, Fair BFF. So this guy shows up and gives Tara Reed a hard time about granting that wish, saying giving animals and plants the ability to talk is in violation of the rules, and he turns Tara Reed into a frog, but then changes her back right away. I don't know what the purpose of that was supposed to be. Also, if this guy is supposed to be her boss, why doesn't he just undo the wish? We're then introduced to these two guys who are the antagonists. This guy happens to be carrying around this newspaper cutout that says there is a contest where they are looking for something weird and for the contestants to upload it to the internet. This is what they come up with. <laughs> Lily comes inside and tries to get Andy to talk in front of the others and he doesn't. Go ahead Andy, say something. When she asks him about this later, he explains that it's because if people find out about a talking animal, only trouble is going to come from it. That if folks get wind of a talking animal, only trouble is going to come from it. That's when we're introduced to the voice of Whiskers, the evil cat, who is also voiced by the director. No one will care, she says. <laughs> I'm an old animal child. I guess they couldn't get the cat to sit still long enough, so they had to use some of the footage in slow motion. Lily invites her sister and her moron friend to come see Andy talk to prove that nothing bad will happen if other people hear him talk. Can you actually talk, little rat? I'm a hedgehog, sweetheart, not a rat. Oh my god. 
Oh, good lord. It's like this girl just had her first period right at this exact moment. I can't believe he can really talk. Oh. So anyway, this guy climbs up a ladder to spy on these young girls. You know how creepy guys do. And he hears the animals talking. He figures he can put them on the internet to win his contest. Side note here, this girl on the left is supposed to be an idiot. I don't remember landing on the moon. <laughs> Which I get, but during this whole conversation, she's taking selfies and then moves the phone camera all the way around so we can clearly see a man standing in front of them. Let's also not forget that this movie encouraged Dean Kane to sleep with an underage girl. Hi, Mr. Mason. Hi, uh, Trixie. Trixie's my dummy cheermate. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, have a, have a great day at school then, Terry. Oh. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Bye. Don't work too hard, Mr. Mason. Fox. <laughs> Which he didn't do. Not saying he did. I'm just saying it encouraged him. Okay, little cheerleader. You're kind of laying in the middle of my floor here. I'm just gonna... I'm gonna have to climb up and over you. So the naked cat and these two criminals come up with a plan to steal Andy. They come up to the girls' room and convince them that there are termites in the walls to make them leave. Emergency termite inspection. Around this time, Dean Kane returns because he forgot something, I guess. There are also a few times in the movie where you can see the reflection of the camera crew really easily. Like here in Dean's car, you can see the cameraman and the boom operator. Well, Dean comes inside and discovers the cat is talking to him. Excuse me, are you actually talking? Yeah, I am talking. <laughs> All things considered, he pretty much handles stress the exact same way that I do. How about we go have a little lie down? What do you say? Yeah, okay. But at least he didn't discover these two grown men hiding under his teenage daughter's bed. Then Dean just has this really depressing conversation with Andy that I think just hits a little too close to home. You know, Andy, when I was young, I used to be a heck of a football player. I thought I was invincible. I thought I could do anything. Never thought about growing old. Dad, why aren't you at work? Work. Cartoons. Potato chips. Am I? Am I Dean Kane? The other thing about this movie besides the acting and cinematography is that nothing is realistic. And I'm not just talking about the talking animals and talking plants. Just like interactions just see, seem so weird. Just look at this interaction between Dean and his wife. Bob, what are you doing here? I live here. No, I meant why aren't you at the office? I love potato chips. Love them. Cartoons, too. They're <laughs> It's like a middle schooler wrote the script and then somehow managed to land Dean Kane and Tara Reed and somehow people willing to produce it. Please just tell me how you can talk, my little friend. I'm a victim of dark magic by a fairy. Whoa. Geez, that took kind of a dark turn. Now we get a little bit of backstory for Mr. Whiskers, the evil cat. He tells of a time that he once fell in love and, well, I'll just let him explain it. I had someone. I was young. Powerful, slick, and then one day, I saw her. She was beautiful, a vision. We cuddled together every day. Hairless cats always sort of freak me out. I'm glad that they took the audio out between the two cats sort of cuddling. You know what, I'm gonna put the audio back in myself. We'll see how it really would sound. Yeah. Not nearly as cute, huh? She'd been truckered, flattened, smushed. Oh yeah, that might have been my bad. <laughs> so Tara Reed brings Andy to Fairyland and tries to convince him to convince the little girl to retract her wish. It was hard watching this scene with the terrible green screen and sudden shift to 480p resolution for some reason. I <laughs> had yeah, the weirdest dream last night. Hey look, it's the boom operator in the window again. Morning, Andy. You okay, Bob? No. No. Man, they are just gonna keep cutting back to that shot with the boom in the window, aren't they? Your husband's watching cartoons again. Oh yeah, aren't you that underage girl that's trying to get him to sleep with you? Yeah, he's lost his marbles. You need to stop thinking about Dean Kane's marbles, okay? So the cheerleaders take the hedgehog to school to show off for a science project. Well, the little girl, who is also present at this high school gathering, which doesn't take place in a classroom, 
decides this is the best moment to wish that all the animals and plants can't talk again, making her sister and sister's friends look like a bunch of idiots. Come on, Andy. Talk. Talk. Also, who are these two people? We've never seen them the entire movie. Did they just get debriefed about this talking hedgehog right before the presentation? What did you wish for? I decided to help out a little problem they were having. That's very really kind. Oh yeah, and she also wished for these two teachers to fall in love. There was a little bit of side story of that. I mean, very little, like one three minute scene earlier on. That's something that happened. <laughs> Sorry girls, another termite attack. I need you all to leave, please. Why is no one stopping these two grown men from going into these teenage girls' bedrooms? The two bad guys end up in some bad physical comedy and let Andy go. Mr. Whiskers tries to catch him and almost gets hit by a truck, but missed after Andy told him to watch out. Now, Mr. Whiskers is a good guy. They get caught stealing Andy while trying to walk around the house. Daddy, Daddy, Mr. Roller's trying to steal Andy! I'm not sure why the little girl freaks out because the two guys told her they would be taking him downstairs. Oh, that's okay, sweetie. I'll take him down the stairs for you. Thank you, Mr. Roller. It sure is a good thing that Lily has a super dad to come rescue me. Oh, I see what you did there. It's because he used to be TV Superman. Uh, also ballsy to show the address of this house throughout the whole movie. I was able to find the Google Street View of this house in Michigan in less than two minutes. Just a heads up. Oh my god, he straight up just dropped that hedgehog. You still got it, number seven. Did she just change into an adult cheerleading uniform and then run out and do her front lawn? I'm just checking. Have I always been wearing a cheerleading outfit? You have in my mind. What? And this is all just a figment of my imagination. So this entire movie was just a figment of Dean Cain's imagination. And that's it. That's, that's the whole movie. I wish I had more for you guys, but that's honestly the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.